Hello and today I'm going to tell you a bit about what is the Haradoma um, growth model. Now this model was essentially put together um, to say that actually economic growth can be explained by this and then it's been um, implemented and interpreted as well if economic growth is equal to this then surely develop, uh, developing countries just have to apply and replicate um, the same principle and they should get economic growth so that's how the model has become today known as a growth strategy model the model was developed in the late 1930s and what it does so the bottom line of the model is is that the rate of growth GDP is determined by two factors. The first factor is the savings ratio and the second factor is the capital output ratio. What do these terms mean? Well, the savings ratio essentially means is that how much an economy can save. And so the uh, growth of GDP will be determined by how much an economy can save. The second one, capital output ratio, this says that the rate of growth will be determined by how productive investment is because what the capital out, uh, output ratio is showing is the amount that has to be spent in order to produce a unit of national output to increase it by a unit. So savings and productivity of investment. These two factors jointly account for the rate of growth. So if you're looking to increase growth, and we're going to make the Harold Doma model into a growth strategy model, what we're essentially trying to do is we're trying to A, increase the savings in the economy, and B, increase the capital output ratio, whether that's through foreign aid or taking in foreign technology. There are different policy implications. And in my other video, I'll go over what are the implications of the Haradoma model. But for today, right now, all I want to go over is what is this model saying? So I've already said that the bottom line is, is that the growth of GDP is determined by savings ratio and capital output ratio. How do we get this? How do Harrod and Domar uh, prove this? Well, there's a formula. What they do is they assume several mathematical things. There's four assumptions, which when you bind those four assumptions together, you get this formula, which essentially denotes that the rate of growth is equal to savings ratio divided by capital output ratio. Now let's go over the formula. So let's start with assumption number one. Savings is equal to a function of the national income. This makes perfect sense. If your national income is higher, there is more ability, more money running around, you're more able to save. Therefore, S is equal to SY, which is a function of national income. Assumption number two is this, that investment is equal to changes in capital stock. Because this also makes logical sense. If capital stock is changing, something's got to give. There's got to be some reason. And that reason is people are making investments. And those investments are showing up in the changes of capital stock. So that's how we define investment here. The third assumption is that um, investment is equal to savings. Well, this makes perfect sense because if you're going to invest, you're going to need the money for somewhere. Where is it coming from? Savings, which banks use to transfer into loans or your own personal savings. So it's coming from somewhere. And the fourth assumption is this, that if we are saying that there is a capital output ratio and what is built, what is built, what is this theory built on? Sorry, three times I have to repeat that is that essentially there is a direct relationship between capital stock and income. So capital stock divided by income is going to give you the capital output ratio. So what I've done is I've rearranged it. I've just said if it's equal to capital stock over income, then it's also equal to changes in capital stock over changes in income, which if you rearrange, then you times both sides by changes in Y, then you get changes in capital stock equals um, the capital output ratio equals a changes and uh, times by changes in y. And remember, before we said that investment is defined as changes in um, k, so therefore you would get investment is equal to capital output ratio times by changes in y. So putting these four assumptions together, we get what the Harrod Doma model formula is, and that is this. It looks a bit complicated. Essentially, you get that savings, which is a function of national income, is equal to the capital output ratio, which is um, the productivity of investment, 
times by changes in GDP. So now I've written in pencil because it's just a short explanation because some of you might have got this automatically, others might need to see it. That investment, remember, is equal to savings. And let's see if I can get this closer. Savings is equal to um, a function of national income. So that goes there. So there you have it. The investment is also equal to changes in capital stock. Remember, that's how we define it. And changes in capital stock from rearranging it, we had is equal to capital output ratio times by changes in national income. So that essentially means that that I transforms into C, which is capital output ratio times by changes in national income, and you get this final formula, which all you need to do is rearrange uh, and simplify. So if we divide it by Y, and if we divide it by C, we get that changes in GDP over GDP, which is the rate of growth, is equal to the savings output ratio, which is the marginal propensity to save, divided by the capital output ratio, which is how productive um, the economy is. And this is what we started off the video with, the bottom line of the Harrod Domar model. Now, before I finish the video, because I don't like to make my videos too long, what does the model conclude? Well, it concludes that economic growth does depend on both labor and capital. But because it's assumed in this model that labor is unlimited, just like the Lewis model, that growth deficiency is to do with a lack of physical capital. That's what is hindering growth. So then what are they saying? That more physical capital um, will generate more growth. So what we need to do is more investment is going to lead to more capital accumulation, which generates more higher output and income and increases growth. And higher incomes, again, they allow higher savings. Then you have um, greater investment. And this is a vicious cycle. Savings, investment, savings, investment, savings, investment. So when we interpret it, we need to inject some savings, inject the productivity, and that's how we're going to get a country moving. Now, in my other videos, I'll talk more about the Harrod-Domar model assumptions but I hope this helps. Thank you for watching.